playing video games, staying inside and playing video games for charity. I've got a couple donations I'll read here. We got $50 from Anonymous. This game is so spooky. Speaking of spooky, did you know there's a spooky, scary skeleton inside you right now? Thanks for the great entertainment, AGDQ. We've got $50 from Anonymous. We were going to donate for the blindfolded Pokemon race, but that was already met. Might as well kill all the animals. Wait, no, save the animals. Great job, everybody. On camera and behind the scenes, we love what you do and good luck to all runners. We've got $100 from Summer Haze. Seriously, so much props to Joden Stone for keeping his composure during that awful RNG, even to the point of avoiding safe strats and getting that first try boulder glitch. Mario 64 speedruns are also insane. I need a race. We've got $200 from Booty900. Loving this N64 block, I have never seen these routes of Ocarina or Mario Kart before. Putting this towards Luigi's Mansion 100%. Shoutouts to my fellow Slumber Party boys. So close to the 7500. Coming up, we have Banjo Tooie, run by Captain Cole. And coming up after that is Donkey Kong 64 by Two Das. I've got a special donation here from Ronald McDoodle, donated $15. He says, Hi, I am McDonald, and I said to buy thing. After run, for very animals, do kill. Do is eating. Cheeseburg is for your enjoying pleasures. Do it or you will meet your doom. Thank you very much, Ronald McDoodle. We've got a $50 donation from Bright Crucible. That Mario Kart 64 run was astonishing. So many amazing runs so far. Looking forward to the Super Metroid race and saving the animals.
got a $5 donation from Cosmic Heart. Wanted to wish Captain Cole good luck on his BT run. Love watching GDQs and I appreciate all the work that is put into them. And then we have $50 from JLink. MSF FTW. Save the animals, smash the pumpkins. going to be speedrunning banjo Tui. I am Captain Cole. I'm D.A.J. Johnson. I'm Univin. I'm Garage Door Opener. I'm Matt Taz, 64. All right, so we're going to start off the run now. Okay, as you guys can just see there, we did a cutscene nice, skip to avoid nice. Fungo. Way to go, go, my boy. That saves a good amount of time. So, before we get to the first Fungo fight, we're gonna quickly grab some eggs so that we can take them out faster. Alright, so this is one of the first major uh, RNG parts of the game. Um, the Fungo fight, it is actual RNG. Um, it, the fight depends on what color uh, potion you get. And the ideal potion is green, which is invisibility. Um, the other two potions, red and blue. Red being makes you grow, makes them grow really big, and blue makes them multiply. Are slightly slower. Um, red is okay in terms of cat. Like, oh, you got the best potion. All right, cool. Nice. Good start. Good RNG. So yeah, green's the fastest potion to start off with, and we'll be seeing one other potion later that will be faster if it's blue. Green potion is usually really good to start off with because there's a really specific egg shot you can make right here that there, can just it. barely nice. reach him. Perfect. Oh, okay. good. That, that was, was a really good, good jump. So he's in the middle here, spot too. and he may be able to get a push in this cutscene, which will push him a little He'll further ahead. He'll get it. It'll be a decent push. Nice. Nice, that's a really Look good push. Look at that, in the door. <laughs> Alright, so now as we exit the tunnel, we can start a little bit about plot. Basically this game is about, uh, after Banjo-Kazooie, uh, Grunty is freed by her sisters, and they plan on taking out the people of Jinjo Village, and they start with Bottles. So we're out there to avenge Bottles and to defeat Grunty again, and we're going to need the help of King Jingling, who we're about to see, because he gives us a jiggy and opens up the next area of the world. He's got a nice pet thingy. Does it have an actual name? No, I don't think so. I think it's just a pet thingy. So what he's doing here is he's opening the back door to Bowles' house. We're going to use that to get to Wooded Hollow, to access Jiggy Wiggy's temple, which is where you open all the worlds in this game. This okay. route is... So coming up here is where this route starts to differ than any other category. With the introduction of this new route in any percent, we're going to get something we've never gotten before in a run. Usually we go left here and take the shortcut into Wooded Hollow, but this time we're going right into Bottles' house. And the reason we go to Bottles' house is so we can get this item, which will help us perform a glitch later on in the run, which was just recently discovered after the last time this appeared at a GDQ, and it shortened the run by <laughs> over two hours, yeah. so it's pretty big. It was a minor time save, yeah. Just a minor time save. <laughs> Alright, that's what we just got. We got the Amazo Gaze goggles, which allows us to zoom in. Right there, he jumped over that guy. Um, 
there's a little cutscene that plays if you, uh, get a, if you talk, run into him, but you can just skip it easily. Alright, so now we're going to enter Jiggy Wiggy's temple for, uh, to solve the first puzzle and open the first world. You know, did you want to explain what the prerequisites are to beat this run in regards to Jiggy's and notes? Uh, yeah. I believe the any percent route for this game collects 14 Jiggies to open one of the levels Jolly Rogers Lagoon, and it gets 315 notes. Yeah, right? for Clockwork. For eggs. Clockworks, because you need them for the final boss. So the whole route's basically just getting 14 Jiggies and 315 notes, so you can actually beat the game. Yeah. And so here we're gonna do, uh, do a puzzle. Unlike Banjo Kazooie, where you just press a button to put piece in the puzzle, we actually have to do the puzzle ourselves. So this is very RNG heavy, where these pieces can be are taken out randomly and put randomly all across the screen. Nice, that's really good. I want to bed. Nice. That was really good. Don't solve the puzzle. Pretty hard. So now, after we open puzzle. We have this long cutscene, so if you want to do some more donations, now is the time. All right. We have $20 from Gord Turtle. Second GDQ donating. Keep up all the good work and awesome runs, guys. We have $5 from Force Dried. Yo, it's your boy Funk. <laughs> good luck on the run, Cole, and shout outs to the rest of the Banjo community. By the way, where was Groggy? We have $50 from Techie Baron. Love watching the, the game done quick. Last year was my first, and I couldn't imagine missing one. Shout out to all the runners and all the people behind the scenes making sure these things happen. Keep it going, and let's break that million dollar goal. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the first level. We're gonna try and avoid the signs that are by Jiggy Wee's temple entrance because it'll help us do a glitch later on. We'll explain that when it comes. Okay, so if you hold R while entering Mayhem Temple, you can lower the camera and it helps reduce lag. Lag manipulation is a really big part of this run because since it's so short, we try to reduce as much of the slowdown as possible in order to optimize the time. Right here, he's coming up in the first move, the A game. Um, we need it part. It's one. Of, it makes a lot of things faster and also is necessary for the trick we're gonna be doing later in the run. Oh. Univin, did you want to explain how bottles bonks work? Medium jars bonks? Yeah, so... Yeah, so there's a random chance on each of these jam jar silos when you're learning a move that he can... When he jumps back into his silo, he can actually hit his head on the silo because it closes early. It wastes about four and a half to five seconds, possibly more depending on how laggy the area is. Some games, some silos are more laggy than others, so they can waste more time if he bonks on them. Hopefully we'll see none of them. Yeah, run. hopefully. This is the only time right here we're going to talk to Mumbo. We just need him to activate the Golden Goliath and kick open a door. And also kick open a uh, rock that we need for the flight. Unlike the previous Banjo game, you actually get to be Mumbo and walk around as him, and you do your magic elsewhere. He doesn't transform you into things in this game. That's for another character we'll be seeing later. Okay, so when we were dodging the signs in the temple earlier, that's for a glitch that's about to come up, we're gonna jump towards a sign uh, as Mumbo, and it'll avoid fall damage because it'll trigger a mini cutscene, and that's a little bit faster than if we had fallen. Nice, nice, you got it. Got it. Alright, so if you guys notice at the start, we didn't start on a clean file. 
This is because this file is just Jinjo manipulation. In this game, there's 32 different patterns that the Jinjos can be randomly placed in each level. And because of this, they... And in order to collect many of the Jiggies in the game, you gotta collect certain amounts of each color of Jinjo family. And of, obviously, there's Jinjo families that have less in them, so those ones can give us fast Jiggies. And we want to collect these ones in this run. So in order to do have a run that has the best Jinjo file, we manipulate the file by having a file created that already has the best pattern in it. This starts the file three seconds ahead. However, we'll add three seconds onto the file afterwards. The best pattern in question has uh, white, white, and, um, white and two oranges in the first stage, so. It also gives you three jiggies right off the uh, right off the start, so it's very crucial to the run. You yeah. really want the first Jinjo to be white, and we'll show you why when we load back up. Right now, we're gonna do a save and quit, and that's faster than waiting for the Golden Goliath to finish the timer and then watch a cutscene. And then you have to walk back as Mumbo. Yeah. This one. Okay, so as he's entering this level, he's going to manipulate the camera so that the feather's on for a certain amount of time on the screen, and that's how he can get red feathers instead of gold without having to slow down. Also here is where we're going to see why white Jinjo is the better Jinjo Dao first, but we're going to learn grip grab first. Okay, so anyways, since white Jinjo is the first we collect, and it's also the only one of its family, we skip having to play a cutscene, because you get one cutscene when you collect the first Jinjo, and then one cutscene when you finish the first family, but by doing this, you skip the first one and only play the second one, which saves time. Right here, he's gonna take four, uh, four hits of damage off of the torch, and then he's gonna go collect the Jiggy and then Dower Corp right after. Unlike the previous game, this one, when you die, you keep your notes instead of lose all your notes. So this allows us to do many death orbs in the level, which gets us back to the start of the level faster. So you're intended to actually just tiptoe across this, but with a well-placed uh, talent trot and jump, just jump to it. Jump cool. Alright, so now we're going to do some flying. And the flying in this game, you have better control and you can actually hold the beat bomb. Since we started this game after Banjo-Kazooie, we already have all the moves, so beat bomb we don't have to pick up. So nice. Flying definitely feels a lot more natural in this game compared to the first one. Oh, that was close. So right here we have to take out these flies to get a Jiggy. And the flies are in different places and their movement's based off RNG, so you can lose a lot of time here. That was good. You're also limited on eggs there, so it can be difficult, but you can grab those too. Those slow. flies like to troll you by flying away from you, making them harder to shoot. Yeah, they can change directions pretty rapidly on you. Right also, there, he took damage in, uh, into the loading zone, which skipped the damage in it, or gave you an extra hit of damage, and also skipped the animation. Uh, right here, he's going to jump across to the quicksand, and then he's going to go straight to one of the hardest tricks in this run, the pillars. The pillars used to not be in this route, but thanks to a mistake by Mad Taz while routing another category, it's back uh, in, and 
has made this category much more difficult. Funnily enough, he hates pillars. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty convenient that he's the one who found a use to put it back in the route. Irony is fine. The way the pillars jiggy was originally supposed to work, you were supposed to come back to the level with Bill Drill and kind of bounce the jiggy down the pillars so that you can collect them right at the bottom, but they're placed just just close enough that with a well-timed jump and beak bust, you can reach the next pillar and make it all the way to the top. It's very difficult though, so we're gonna probably need some focus time here. That oh my God. boy, Chris oh. try. That's awesome. Woo. That's really that good. Man. Cole had a lot of confidence going in that with one health, because if you mess that up, you have to walk all the way back there, but he's been practicing a lot and he really just killed that yeah, trick. if you miss really the good. first two pillars, you won't take fall damage, but if you miss that last one, you will take fall damage, and if you have one health, you'll die and be sent back to the start without yeah. the Jiggy. Alternatively, um, you can get that with a well-timed Clockwork Shop, but in this route, by the time we get Clockworks, we don't need any more Jiggies, yeah. so... And so now we're going to do some more puzzles and open more levels, so read them donations. And all right, we've got $20 from Anani Moose donating for this game, and it's amazing music. Good luck and save the Jinjos. We've got $15 from Concept Zero. Had to donate again during another favorite game of mine, BT Hype. All for a great cause and Chrono Trigger 100%, of course. That was a really good puzzle, by the way. Yeah, if you notice, he had eight Jiggies come in here. You need four Jiggies to open Glitter Gulch Mine, the second level, and then eight Jiggies to open Witchy World. Part of the reason that having a good Ginger Pattern helps so much that it gives you those Jiggies early on. So by the end of MT, you have enough Jiggies to open two Jiggy Wiggy, or do two Jiggy Wiggy puzzles in one go, instead of having to come back later. That saves a lot of time. We actually have another cutscene and uh, also another puzzle and another cutscene after that, so you can keep going with donations. We have a good amount of time. All right, we got $50 from Jerome Montgomery. You guys are awesome. Keep up the amazing runs. And $200 from Francesco. Hi, all. Sixth time watching GDQ Live for me. I figured I would donate my first chunk during this divine block as it has so many of my favorite games. Chan tangential, but could you please find Trihex and tell him his friends at the Naughty Dog Kennel say hello? Best of luck on Banjo, and wish you all the best in the continued runs through the week. Thanks. Uh, we have $100 from Nick H. Love this game. Go, go, go. And $50 from Derpicles. Here's to a great cause supported and run by great gamers. Third donation to SGDQ this year. Let's break a million dollars. That was another really good puzzle. We've got $30 from Elwac. Love the runs. Keep up the great work. And $50 from Fat Monstar. As a game designer, it thrills me to no end watching players exploit the crap out of games. Love GDQ every year. We have 5150 from Parlor Boy. Throwing up just SGDQ on my second screen while I upgrade my SQL on my server box. I have no idea whether to save the animals or kill them. Are they particularly fluffy and cuddly and friendly? If so, then yeah, totally kill them. So now we have both the second and the third level open. So now we're going to go to collect some more jiggies and notes in those two levels and also set up this gl major glitch that we're going to be showing off later. Luckily, the glitch can be set up in the first three levels, but we need to have all four of the first, or all the four first levels opened in order to get a move because you can only do the glitch on once per file. Right here, we're gonna get the fire eggs. Uh, we only need them to hit one switch to be able to get to Witchy World. Otherwise, we would just skip them. They're only required for the switch, but we use them elsewhere in the run to save time. Nice, no bonk. Two for two so far. Or three for three. Yeah, three for three. 
Okay, so this is pretty high-tech movement that he's about to do, and he'll be on a timer, so let's hope he can nail this. It's a lot of dodging edges and curves of the mountain. He has to collect about, I think, 20 notes and then Jinjo, and then make it in time to skate so he can get inside the waterfall. Nice, good job. Awesome. That was really good. Yeah. Five. Five seconds to spare. Nice. Okay. Right up here, he's going to be doing the uh, a trick called the egg large. Nice. First time. You're supposed to have Bill Drill, the drill through that rock. However, you can exploit hitboxes in this game by doing egg barges, which allows you to extend your reach through the rock and pick it up, pick the Jinjo up. Nice, good job on that too. All right. He's Those taking really damage here on. to set up for a death warp coming up. Okay, so this underwater cave is has a maze to get to the jiggy, but it's the same every file, so we're just gonna go through it with it memorized. And this death warp just saves us backtracking to get back to the beginning of the level. Earlier I was talking about how Mumbo doesn't transform you into things in this game. Well, the person who transforms you into stuff in this game is Humba Wumba. And she's in this tent right here. And in this level, each level she transforms into something different. In this level specifically, we transform into a detonator. The detonator is going to be required to set up the glitch, but we also have a new glitch that was found for this category that Univin's going to explain when the time comes. And it helps us just get another Jiggy that we're not intended to get at the moment. Yeah, as AJ said, this is one of the more recent glitches found for use in this category. There are several spots in GGM that have a sort of overhang where if you hold up and jump into them, they'll sort of push you back down. And what you could do is, if you interrupt your jump with a detonation technique by pressing B, you can actually float up during the length of the animation. We think it's frame perfect also, but it might not be. Uh. So it may take another try. Nice, there we go. That's it. Good job, Kay. That. Yeah, we coined the term detonation levitation, kind of self-explanatory. Something seemed quite right about that one, though. It's weird. Yeah, I'm going to investigate a bit. Alright, so coming up, we're going to get some more notes, but we're also going to start the first part of the setup on the glitch, which is going to be to use the detonator to blow up the rocks blocking the saucer barrel box. And then we're gonna save and quit out of this level. Yeah, it's very important you blow up these boulders here. Otherwise, the two hours added to the run. Yeah, you can't really finish the run. So you saw the box stop there. There's another door on the other side, which is in Witchy World, that is currently closed, so the saucer pail can't get to the other side. So what we're gonna do is, when we go to Witchy World, we're gonna actually open it from that side, and then that's how the glitch is gonna start. And then you'll see where it goes from there. It gets pretty insane. Magic occurs, and it'll be a really good time. Especially for people who haven't seen it, your mind will be blown. 
right up here he's going to flap up to the top of this red ginger house in order to get the uh, treble clef just for some extra notes that I'll need later. Like we said, a big part of this run is getting the requirements to beat the final boss. And the last one that we get will be Clockwork Kazooie Eggs, which are 315 notes to obtain. So here we're going to be hitting that fire switch we were talking about earlier. This game really likes to have first-person shooting. A so a lot of places in this game, you have to aim with the N64 joystick, which can be pretty difficult at times. And it's really hard to aim really fast. And unluckily, the final boss is one of these sections where you have to shoot in first person, so it's a pretty hard boss fight. Yeah. Aiming something that takes a lot of time to get good at in this game. It takes a lot of practice. The first person sections in this game have been described as something that you need three hands to do well. <laughs> it's a two-hand person doing a three-handed person's job. Yeah, a lot of newer runners lose a lot of time to the FPS section just because they're really awkward to aim. Um, it takes a lot of time to get used to. One thing to know is we didn't actually learn the move to get the dead earth of... Um, first the, person shooting. Yeah, the move, but we don't actually need it because all the move does is unlock the... Uh, remove the flags. It doesn't actually give you the move. So the move's always active, it just, we need to be in the area where it triggers it. And since we, we don't need to pass an area to be triggered into this first person shooting on the final boss. So here we're gonna extend our hitbox for, forward to get notes. Or no, we're not actually, we're gonna go to do dive or death. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good, AJ. Wrong yeah. route, too Wrong. many routes for this game. It. Wrong category. So. Didn't fall off. That's good. No Univin special today. <laughs> You're meant to oh, type out, man. You're meant to tiptoe across, but you can just jump or run across if you know what you're doing. Oh, Ooh. those guys have the, uh, really good AI. <laughs> the slot machines have an incredible aim. They, <laughs> they know what direction you're going before you even move your control stick. This is the laggiest jam jars. Oh, Damn. Get the bonk. Oh. This is the laggiest bonk in the game. So this one would I'll lose like seven jam seconds. Yeah. Alright, All right, so this is another tight rope. You can go for a mat toss. Nice. Uh, nice. yeah, that tight rope is really hard to do. So that was really good. So now we've gotten three families complete. Those are all the Jinjos we're going to be getting in this run, right? Yeah. And those are all the Jiggies we got, too. So when we go to jo Jolly Rogers Lagoon, all we're going to be doing is collecting the notes in the move. All right, so right here we're going to be using the Amazo Gaze goggles from earlier to open the door that we were talking about that was on the other side of Saucer Peril. And we're going to... Oh, man, we gonna miss. After we hit the button, we're going to... You see him zooming out his camera after he shoots the grenade. That reduces lag. But you need to keep it zoomed in or else it won't register the hit. Uh, that button's out of sight there, so you have to hit just above. One, two... And so we're resetting the console here for the glitch. It delays the cutscene for later because we're not watching it now. So next time we walk into the area where that cutscene is, it will play it. And this is necessary for the glitch for later. And so every time you go through a loading zone in this game, the game auto saves. So right there between cutscenes, it auto saved. And so now we're going to go open the fourth letter level, do more puzzles, watch more cutscenes, so we can read some more donations. Wonderful. We have $30 from Anonymous. Played through this game so many times, but never seen a speedrun of it. Mine is already blown. We also have $300 from Anonymous. Had to donate during my favorite game ever. Behold the power of the mighty Jiggy Wiggy. Here's to a link to the past 100%, which is also in my top 10 games. We have $30 from Steven and Tokyo Tina. Spent lots of time playing this game. Can't wait to see all the awesome tricks and glitches. 
Uh, we have $30 from Max106. Banjo Tui is better than Banjo Kazooie. Keep up the good work, guys. Ooh, fighting words there. We have $20 from Azure Flame. Had to donate during one of my favorite games of all time. Banjo has always been one of the games I go back to play, and that goes for both of the N64 games. Good luck on the run. We have $50 from Amy, who just says, Banjo Tui! We have $55 from Marola, always looking to donate to a good cause. And $25 from Andre B. Keep up the awesome run. Shout out to the Rare Witch Project, who keeps the hunt for stop and swap going in 2015. We have $25 from Abby J, who says, Eek em, boke em. Uh, so right there, we reset. So we. The game auto-saved, and so we don't have to watch that cutscene since it's a lot longer than all the other ones we previously watched. So it's faster to reset, go back into the file, and walk to the level that way, instead of watching all the cutscenes and walking from there. Yeah, usually if you're, if what you're doing immediately after a puzzle is heading toward a silo to warp somewhere, it's usually faster to reset on the puzzle cutscene. So what he's going to do here is he's going to collect a, a couple of notes on the side and then he's going to use basically the only reason we learned split up skip for in order to activate a switch in order, or activate a switch to open the door to get to Jolly Roger's Lagoon. We get these notes of Solo Kazooie because she moves faster and she doesn't have a sliding recoil when she's uh, jumping. And that's the only time we'll be split up as Solo Banjo and Solo Kazooie. So coming up right here is another move for eggs. It's called the Ice Eggs. It's used in every other category but this one since it's not needed for anything. And so getting them wastes about 15 seconds. And if you do, apparently you go to Tui Prison. Get a visit Dilbertha. Yeah, Tui Prison is not some place you want to be. It's a bad place. All right, so right here he's going to collect these notes in front of that door, and then he's going to go inside another building to collect a set of notes, and he's going to walk back out and then just start swimming. Um, one thing to note, he, most other cat, longer categories, he'll try to go for double air. Um, he doesn't actually need the double air, which also, the double air also, by the way, gives you double swimming powder, but, power, but um, because we're not, we're only swimming for a short while, we don't actually, it's not actually faster to go out of your way to get it. Um, but it also makes this section real, pretty hard, because you have five health, and you're, because you can see how slow he's swimming. We, like, barely make it to where we need to yeah. be. And that relies on us avoiding enemies as well, like yeah. this octopus coming up, which is somewhat difficult to dodge if you don't know what you're doing. But it can you can mess it up sometimes. It's got weird movement patterns. Generally, if you get hit by the octopus more than once, there's a building close to the entrance to Atlantis where you can fuel up on air before making the rest of the swim. Nice. nice good job. But That's you have the to see through loading yeah. zones, so it's generally pretty slow. All right. Um, we still gotta get the rest of the swim. There's some eels that, with RNG and bad movement, can get in our way. Let's hope not. Pretty much, if you hit the eels, you're kind of done for. And if so, you just have to do the swim again. It's not super long, but let's hope it doesn't happen. You also have to grab these notes really quick, which is... It's scary to do. If you have impeccable timing, there's also a glitch where if you surface... If you surface and run out of health at the same time, you activate the zombie banjo glitch where you can live and move around with zero health. Oh. Uh, Wait. Oh my god. That's just really bad luck. You can't really do much about that. That was just luck. Luckily, it's not a super long time to get back there, but 
can't really do anything about it. Those eels are right above me when I went in, so I had to swim out, but then they just chased me. The problem with the eels is usually if you get hit once in the stun, you always get hit like a second time. Otherwise, you would have made it, because yeah. it was like a decent, it was a really good That's swim. That's like the only real first major time loss of this run. Yeah, this has been a really good run this so far. It's been really good. So now we have to go do it all again. We've got a $15 donation from Arizona Cat. Hello, got to donate to rep the banjo community. With this donation, I can only afford to eat beans this week. Much love, Arizona Cat. And we have $10 from Anonymous. Decided that I should finally toss some money your way this year. What better time for it than during one of my favorites? The banjo games were staples of my childhood, and I'm loving the run so far. Here's to success all through the run and to raising a million. Alright, so it should be much easier this time since I don't have to go out of my way for that note right there. Yeah, so he has extra So I have a little time. bit more air time. Also, shout out to the Banjo community. We've spent a lot of time routing this category, especially when the glitch was found, and a lot of people put a lot of effort into it yes. to make this run as good as it is. None of them were there this time. <laughs> See, the eels are just. Of course, it's after they decide luck. to be a bunch of jerks. Yeah. So we're gonna learn uh, Talon Torpedo here, which allows us to get to the area where Clockwork Busy Eggs are, and that's really the only thing we needed in this level. So we're gonna Death Warp on the fire. So now that we exited Jolly Rogers, we're going straight to um, Pine Grove in order to use the Talon Torpedo, like AJ said earlier. Coming up is the second Klungo fight, and we have two potions left. One of them is slow, and one of them is fast, so... Let's hope for the fast one. Hope for the yeah, fast exactly. one. Always gotta hope to go fast in the speed run. So there's the only use of Talon Torpedo. Good move. Nice. And here's Klungo too. And this guy again. Guess you could say, here we clung go again. <laughs> 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 eh? Eh? Pretty good. Oh, I'm dying. Get your memes out of here. <laughs> awesome. Nice. So this is the fastest clung go potion pattern for this run. It's a little bit tricky to do the third phase of this fight, though, because you have to shoot from uh, right near the door in order to get a good push. Also, Wait, because so this Klungo splits up, sometimes his clone will run directly in front of the one you're trying to shoot. So it's hard to shoot around. Yeah, that's the trade-off of shooting him from the door. And sometimes the clones can just have really bad walking patterns. They can walk right in front of the real Klungo. You can lose a bunch of time to it. They're pretty nice that time, nice. though, and you even got a C up. Some pro strats right there. Yeah. All right, so you can also get a push in this uh, Klungo cutscene, and you can actually get pushed all the way to the loading zone, which is hard, but the most optimal. Nice. Wow, that's a really good push. That was a good setup. That was really, really good. Okay, here we're gonna pick up the last set of notes and then grab Clockwork Kazooie Eggs and then set up the final part of the glitch. One of the most broken items in the game and we're not even really gonna show any uses of them. Yeah. This, this item really helps destroy other categories. But instead we're just gonna be using it on the final boss. Yep. Uh, so now it is time to Do set magic. up the final parts of the glitch. So this glitch is called Delayed Cutscene Warp, or DCW for short. And in order to do it, we need to watch a cutscene. 
So we're just gonna enter the replay menu and just watch the cutscene for Hag 1. Just because, why not? It's such a good cutscene, we might as well watch it multiple times. Of course. In fact, so, we will. So now we have to sit here and watch this cutscene that's like two minutes long, so I'll explain the glitch. So this glitch, as you saw earlier, we activated the, the rock pile in GGM, and we hit that button in Witchy World. And for, that, it's the only instance of this in the game that we know of. That is a cutscene that can be triggered from two different locations. And because of this, the game does not know where to put Banjo after one of them is done, because they use cutscenes go in linear order, order and go, okay, you hit this, go to this cutscene, now go back to here. However, since two triggers activate the same one, it doesn't know where to put you. So it gets from memory, last cutscene played. And so it warps you, Banjo, back to where last cutscene was played. And so we are going to be watching this cutscene as last cutscene played. So when we walk back into Fuel Depot in our game file, it'll be like, okay, where do we put Banjo after watching this cutscene? It'll be like, oh, we just watched the Hag 1 cutscene, so obviously we need to put him on top of the tower. So it puts us on top of the tower in our game file, and yeah, that will trigger the final boss in our game file. And it's really important, it's the real final boss of the game if you do this glitch. It's not like going into the replay again. This is the real final boss yeah, of the game. Yeah, if you beat Hag 1 on the file, she'll be beaten on that file for good. Yeah. If you can come back there, like the legit way, through Tower of Tragedy and all that, she'll be gone. It's an, uh, One thing to know is you can actually warp to anywhere, any cutscene in Most the game. Most any cutscene. Most cutscenes. There's scenes. some restrictions. Right. There's some. It, basically, if it has black bars on it, chances are you'll be able to warp to it. A lot of them can soft lock if you do if you try to do some trickery with the switch. So this could have a lot of uses, but this is obviously the best use for it is to warp to the final boss in the game because what's a good any percent that doesn't have a warp? Actually, in the hundred percent category, this glitch is used as well, and it saves how much? Like almost twenty, 20 minutes. minutes. Like it's crazy. Sixteen to seventeen minutes. Yeah. It's it a also lot. affects the cheetah percent category, cutting it in half. Yeah. It really saved a lot and a lot of different categories and allowed bingo to be done for this game too. Yeah, delayed cutscene warp's really good for bingos. It's pretty much the reason bingo was even conceivable in the first place. It makes bingos really fun and interesting. Okay, so here's the magic. First we're in Fuel Depot. And now we're at the final boss of the game. So... What did he do? I don't know, it's magic. Abracadabra. And like I said, this is the real final boss, so that's why we had to get the move. So once we defeat her, the game will be completed. Yeah, this glitch skips having to collect 70 jiggies and go through Tower of Tragedy, which would add on about two hours to this run. Yeah. Saves a little bit of time. A little bit Just of time. Just a little bit. It's like two oh. hours. All right. Yeah. During the fight, uh, most categories you'll shoot her with ice eggs, but since we didn't get him, what we're gonna he's going to be doing is uh, this trick where you sw when you start the fight or when you start shoot in the first person mode, you'll switch immediately from fire to grenade eggs, which will make the grenade eggs shoot out much faster than they would normally. This fight's pretty difficult, so we're not going to be talking too much. We're going to let Cole focus because it's high execution base. Also, he's going to be picking up a lot of eggs during this because. It's faster to get them during the fight. So you can see, you can rapid fire grenade eggs. At, I think it's ice egg speed. As also mentioned before, it's pretty high execution base. Right here, he's going to try to flap up to the drill as it comes towards him, and then look straight up. This will reduce lag while the uh, mortar gun cannons will be shooting at him. And reducing lag is a huge part of this fight. It's where most of the time save comes from being an experienced runner compared to a new runner. Nice, good job. 
So we're going to do it again for the second set of mortars. This one goes on longer, so yeah. we're still going to just... The first mortar phase, she shoots four. This one's at six. six. In case you haven't noticed, right before she starts shooting at me, she brings up a bunch of set of questions. You're intent intended to answer these questions so she shoots slower, but it really doesn't matter, so we yeah, just skip we through We don't them. have the time for it. Good job. This has been a really good fight so far. Right and this is where we're going to use the Clockwork Kazooie yeah. eggs to go into the exhaust port and right. take out the batteries. Right here, he's also going to try to collect some gradient nade eggs because he's really low on them. There, but it's okay, we can grab them later. Uh, it's gonna be close, but I can probably grab them here. Nope. That's a good job on getting the health. Okay. Pick one blue. Okay, so that was because we didn't have enough red egg eggs, but it's fine. Okay, so we're going to do some lag reduction in the battery chamber. If we face the camera away from the bigger baths of batteries explosion, we can save a little bit of time. That's good. As you can see, she gives you health after each stage, but it's really risky to go for the health sometimes, and it can be worse than just trying to save yourself. That's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay, and that's all we used Clockworks for, so that's why we had to do all of the setup beforehand. Now the Hagwon can't move anymore, so it's pretty much just all first-person shooting from here on out to the end. He's gonna do one. Oh, go ahead. No, he's fine. Okay. In these last phases of the fight, Gruntildle, it will. Um Check out these enemies called Uggers, which run around the arena trying to hit you. Um, he's also going to be switching to solely blue eggs here um, because it's a fat. Basically, to doing the trick, or after a certain amount, it's faster to shoot blue eggs. Yeah, on the yeah. phases where it goes from 30 to 15 and 15 to 1, it's faster to use blue eggs. Because grenade eggs, when rapid fired, can cause a lot of lag, and you can also Especially quick on fire this blue eggs. On yeah, the gas with the phase, gas phase. grenades will cause a lot of lag. Also, now you have an air meter, and since we didn't get double air, this is actually also difficult. All right, time's coming up. I'll let you know. And time. time. 40 that seconds. Boy, cool. Cool. Nice. That's really good. Cool. That's really good, especially for what happened in Jolly Rogers Lagoon. This was a really great run. Two is saved. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing. Okay, I, I would also like to give thanks to Chronicles and Xcord. They did. Chronicles was the one who originally found the DCW warp, then Xcord found that it could be used to warp to any cutscene in the game, bringing the, ones. allowing us to warp to the final boss. So without their help, this run could not be possible. Also, we wanted to give a shout out to Pidgey, who is the record holder for this game in most of the categories, who's put a ton of time into it. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Pidgey. 
Woo! Wee! They even made a party for right just for you right there. <laughs> okay, so we also wanted to show off. Uh, we had a glitch. What do you want to do? Okay. Alright, so. Well, we could watch this cutscene, but. Or we can just skip it because get on to the rest of the marathon. And so we that is Banjo Tui, everyone. Okay. We got DK64 up next, no levels early by Tudo, so that should be a really good run to see. Thanks so much to Captain Colt for that amazing Banjo Tooie run. Again, this is Summer Games done.